Hello, my name is Marcus. I'm the compiler of a collection of therapy quotes entitled Psychoanalytic Self-Awareness Quotes. This is TQ105, therapy quote number 105. The split object, split self structure solves the overwhelming and anxiety-producing problem of keeping hostility and resentment experienced by the child from destroying the desperately needed parental object. Splitting is necessary because it is impossible for the child to remain attached to a mother whom he fears and hates more than he loves and trusts. The split-off frustrating object is separated from the smaller loving object by this defense and the child's rage at the frustrating object no longer threatens the loving part object. The child's sub-ego that relates exclusively to the frustrating and rejecting mother was called the anti-libidinal ego by Fairbairn and the part mother was called the rejecting object, which was originally external but soon became internalized. Okay, so internalization just refers to taking in the memories, keep having memories. So memories are internal, right? <laughs> so when the baby has positive experiences with, with his mother, uh, she comforts him and, and uh, holds him and, and makes him feel safe. All of these experiences are memories. Uh, maybe, the, maybe the mother is looking at the baby with loving eyes, and the baby looks at the looks at his mother and sees that she's looking at him in this loving way. So that's a positive experience that goes into the child's memory. Um, when, when, whenever mothers, whenever he needs the mother, he's around. That becomes a positive memory. All of these positive memories. Uh, come together, coalesce, and con the theory is it condenses into an image called, the, let's say, the, the good part of the mother. So the reward, the, the satisfying uh, mother. Um, likewise, when mother's not around, uh, unavailable, or for whatever reason, and the child has negative experiences, all of those experiences, all of those memories, condensed to form an image called uh, the, frust the frustrating mother. Right. So in fairy tales, that would be the witch and the, the frightening animal, the dangerous creature, the monster. Okay, so we're talking about the theory of the internal world of the baby between birth and three years old. Right. So that's, that's the, the theory of splitting. And the child does this to manage the anxiety um, and to protect the attachment to the good mother. So in regular development, as the, uh, and by the age of three, these two part uh, representations of other come together to form a whole representation of other. That's called whole object relations. Then things are realistic. The fairy tale world, world is over and the child, sings, the child sees things realistically. Like in reality, you know, realistically, right? Um, now, if there's arrested development um, and these two part images don't come together, then, then the child is fixated in having an insecure attachment style. So to preserve this insecure attachment style, he keeps these images separate, split, because he, uh, so Burglar says, uh, neurosis is a petrification of an infantile conflict. So these psychic structures become kind of frozen in a way. If, by five, if this hasn't been worked through and softened up and healed, uh, this can become sort of uh, the psychic structure of the person. Um, and then as an adult, you can see this if the person has strong negative feelings towards others who look different from his mother. That's the theory on prejudice. Because all those negative feelings toward the mother, uh, they get projected outward. 
Because remember, the psyche is ultimately trying to heal. It's ultimately, it's constantly trying to bring the images together. So the person has to see this in, see his anger at his mother from childhood. And the only way to see it is, is for him to notice he's so angry at someone else um, over over nothing, um, over some made up reason. <laughs> Some trivial little, <laughs> the most trivial little speck of dust on the, on the car door, you know. So, um, but but the uh, positive intention is he's trying to get in touch. With, the psyche wants wholeness, so that's why there's um, that, that's an expression of the splitting. So if the person as an adult is, is very, is like that, uh, that's an expression of the, the splitting. Right? So, this is an important part of object relations theory, uh, the concept of splitting. And uh, we mentioned in yesterday's videos uh, that it's a defense to deal with anxiety. So there's a lot of anxiety for the baby. How does he bond to a mother if, the mo if he hates the mother? He can't. You see, he has to think the mother's good. So he'll hold on to the crumbs he gets and bond to that and be loyal to that. And then split off, disassociate, repress, repress all of his real angry feelings towards his memories of, of the bad part mother. See, remember, splitting precludes mourning. If a person has an insecure attachment style with this split still in their psyche, when they get older and they can't mourn because the, the psyche is too fragmented. You need whole object relations to mourn. In reality, people are whole people. So that's why you need whole object relations to mourn. So that's where compli com uh, complicated grief comes from. Chronic grief, prolonged grief, pathological nostalgia, pathological mourning, all that uh, troubled melancholia issue. Because the psychic structures, the, the, the images of the other are split, images of the self are split. All right. So that's one major part of object relations theory. See these split off these split parts again. They're represented in fairy tales and myths. That's how we talk about all this. All right. So so you so you can imagine um, this uh, psychic world as being like a, a whole theater, like a whole drama, you know, and. Um, you know, Robert Bly says Baba Yaga is the personification of the director of this whole drama. She's sort of like the the Hitchcock of the scene, you know, you know like the, the director of it all. So there's a lot a lot going on, and um, the sub ego related to, to the rejecting mother, that's the monster. You know? Then the sub ego related to the rewarding, satisfying mother. There's your ally, your friend. You see, there's the splitting. You see how that happens. And you got the unconscious ego, which is the protagonist. You see, and they're trying to heal the splits. You see, this whole drama is, is but like Berger says, it's stuck. It's a, it's so to heal, we need the conscious ego to be aware of a lot of this stuff and to look inward. Melanie Klein says we live in two worlds: the external world and the internal world, and they're connected. So when we look inward, that's moral authority, moral responsibility, taking responsibility for ourselves. We look at this unconscious, and we. We we reflect on it and uh, make interpretations and and, and uh, internalize new experiences. You know that's why everyone says let's be nice to each other because if every time you have a positive experience that becomes a memory, all of these positive experiences can coalesce to form a new positive object that can be like a new ally, right? Now you have more psychic structure. Now you have experiences. Uh, now you have a new good object inside. Your therapist, the therapist would be a, a new good internalized object. And now the energy within is redistributed. Berger says the life force is now moving around more, some more circulation, there's more connecting going on. And ultimately it leads to the whole object relations, whole self and whole other. And that's the forgiveness. That's uh, the human side. Uh, that, that's the theory on healthy development to get those whole object relations. Traditionally it was called Ubuntu. When you reach that, it's Ubuntu. Previous videos covered Ubuntu. I, I recommend uh, looking, I, I recommend that uh, considering that theory. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so may we all find Ubuntu within and in, inwardly and our, outwardly Ubuntu. We find our humanness and our humanity. So it's a it's an important quote. I know there's some jargon in here, so I, I'd like to do it again once more. If that's okay. The split object, split self structure solves the overwhelming and anxiety producing problem of keeping hostility and resentment experienced by the child from destroying the desperately needed parental object. Splitting is necessary because it is impossible for the child to remain attached to a mother whom he fears and hates more than he loves and trusts. The split-off frustrating object is separated from the smaller loving object by this defense and the child's rage at the frustrating object no longer threatens the loving part object. The child's sub-ego that relates exclusively to the frustrating and rejecting mother was called the anti-libidinal ego by Fairbairn, and the part mother was called the rejecting object, which was originally external, but soon became internalized. Okay, uh, so I'll just leave it at that. Uh, this is object, a major part of object relations theory, how our psychic structure, looking at our psychic structure and how that kind of forms a kind of template that influences the way we see the world. If our, psych, if our psychic structure is so fragmented like this, we see the world in all X or all Y in, in extremes and prejudices from there. You know. If our psychic structure has reached whole object relations, the, um the Umbuntu, okay, these people have a secure, that's from the secure attachment style, or, or it comes after we heal the insecure attachment style, you know, then, then, then we can love and, uh, and so on. Um, remember from a previous video, if there is all this splitting and psychic structures petrified like this and it hasn't been healed, that person doesn't love. They're capable of transference love. So they're going to project the good, the, the good part mother onto the, onto the partner and there'll be the split, you see. And that's why, you know, that's one theory on affairs. Somebody will be, somebody will be married. That's the good part. That's like the mother. You see, you don't want to get too close to the mother. You see, <laughs> you're not you're not seeing the, the woman as a whole woman, woman. You're seeing her as a mother. You see, that's why there's complications in, in, in relationships. You need the whole object relations. You need the Ubuntu to have the, the satisfying relationships, to see the person as good and bad, to see the humanness in the humanity, to see their humanness in the humanity. Right? Remember the humanity? As mentioned in the previous video, there's so much going on. We come out of the womb too early, birth trauma. We may not get insecure attachment style, developmental trauma, intergenerational trauma, situational trauma. There could be school shock, uh, trauma with the dentist, with the tonsils. Trauma. So there's, there's a lot going on with us, with, with being human. There's a lot there. And we find our humanness in our pain in all that. And that's what we all have in common. We all have this pain from all that. So Ubuntu means I am because we are. We find our humanness in our humanity. We are our humanity. We find our humanness, I am, our identity, our pain. We find our humanness in our feelings and in our moral agency to, to take responsibility for ourselves, for our past, for our unconscious. Um, someone called that uh, the mo moral um, moral agency. You know. So again, this implies the goal of therapy: to build the ego, to strengthen the ego, to endorse the ego, to widen the ego, to broaden the ego, so we can witness all this and understand things and uh, reach that awareness of what happened, understanding of trauma and, you know, and how we respond to it. And, uh, and see, there's forgiveness and all that because 
see, the child survived is to survive. The child survived his childhood, so there's some appreciation there. He was resourceful, so there, no child could cope otherwise. They, he had to use these things. So there's, there's forgiveness to, for the self for needing to adopt these de immature defense uh, mechanisms. You see, there's, so there's compassion for the self. So now you're moving towards uh, whole object relations for the self, you see. And then you imagine that the other person, the parent, was in a similar situation. She had her existential net. The father had his existential net, his humanity to deal with. See, and then you work towards whole object relations for the parents. And that leads to whole object relations within. So we're working towards Ubuntu within, uh, and we can see the Ubuntu externally as we develop the Ubuntu inwardly. And that's the healing journey. Uh, someone called it the hero's journey, the monomyth. Everyone has this right kind of thing. So object relations is huge. It's a, I, I, I still think it's the best theory out there. And, uh, you know, uh, really a lot of, uh, I think a lot of appreciation. Uh, I feel... Uh, an immense uh, appreciation for the theorists that developed object relations theory, starting with Klein, Fairbairn, Masterson, especially. He really, uh, he really dedicated his life to clarify this. Cellini is doing a great job. That book with the red cover, I think there's a, a picture of a, I forgot what they're called. You know those the doll within the doll. The, and there's a doll within that doll and so on. I think that's the cover, on the front cover of that. Uh, that's a great introduction to object relations theory. Maybe the next to Masterson, that's probably the best introduction to object relations theory. I recommend both uh, authors very much. Okay, so yeah, it's interesting, right? The child is ingenious. He, he created an attachment to his mother, even if she's a painful mother, an abusive mother. Uh, he managed it by creating split images of the mother, being loyal to the good crumbs, the good parts, and uh, separating all those negative memories, putting it into denial. Later on, uh, in healthy development, everything's sorted out. It's okay. If not, if it's petrified, uh, then at midlife, that's the hero's journey. We need to, to do the work ourselves. We need to repair ourselves. That's the moral agency. We need to fix ourselves. <laughs> Someone called it self-reparenting. Huge topic. Um, I'll just leave it here for now. The quote's posted below. Uh, I hope this has uh, piqued your curiosity regarding object relations theory which is a major thread throughout this uh, series, Object Relations Theory. Masterson, Rinsley, Cellini, Horner, Fairbairn, Klein, and, and a few others. Okay, so I'll, I'll pause it here. This um, has been TQ 105. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. To be continued, more on Object Relations Theory in future videos. Bye for now.